Greetings, O acolyte of Persephone. I am a humble homunculus sent by the goddess to instruct you in the ways of mysticism. First, you need to know how to move around. To run forward, press the W key. To run backwards, press the S key. Click on Continue when you are ready. To turn to the left, press the A key. To turn to the right, press the D key. I will meet you by the road up ahead when you are ready to continue. Oh, one additional thing, Master. If you ever forget what you are supposed to be doing, you can bring up your mission objectives or a speech history in the game options menu. Hit the Escape key to bring up the options menu, and then select either the Objectives or Speech History buttons. Hit the escape key to... Let us discuss how to look around. We call that camera control. You can zoom the camera in and out using the mouse wheel, or you can use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. Why don't you give it a try? You can also zoom in and out by placing your cursor to the extreme top or bottom of the screen. When you've mastered zooming, meet me up the road and I'll teach you something even more exciting. Remember, to find me, just follow the brownish dirt road. Even when I'm not with you in physical form, I will be surveying the battlefield for you. I can see you and your troops at all times. Great, I will meet you at the ruins up ahead. They are off to the side of the road, so you may need to search the area to find them. You can look side to side by moving your mouse cursor to the extreme left or right edge of the screen. You can look in any direction by holding down the middle mouse button and dragging the mouse. If you do not have a middle mouse button, then you can hold control and use the left mouse button instead. By the way, when I say control, I mean the key labeled CTRL on your keyboard. Bet you didn't know mysticism was so technical, did you? Having trouble finding me? Let me illuminate my position with a column of light. The guards will often use such tricks to let you know where things are located. You found me. Good job. Now, let's talk about the mini-map located in the lower right portion of your screen. A lot of information about your surroundings can be gleaned from this mini-map. You see that oblong white shape in the middle? That's you. Go ahead and turn yourself in place. Notice that the map always orients itself in the direction that you're facing. Sometimes you will need to see a larger or smaller portion of your surroundings. This is accomplished by zooming in and out on the mini-map. To zoom in, place your cursor on top of the mini-map and hold down either the middle mouse button or control and the left mouse button. Now move your mouse upwards. Zoom in until you can clearly see a green dot in front of the shape representing you on the map. That green dot is me. Other creatures will appear as a dot in whatever color is assigned to their side. You can gain more information on just about anything on the minimap by placing your cursor on top of it. Things that belong to your side, such as creatures and buildings, will sometimes appear near the edge of the minimap as small arrows. Hold your cursor over the arrow at the edge of the minimap. You will see that this arrow is showing you the direction in which your altar lies. Now, to zoom out, place your cursor on the mini-map and hold down the middle mouse button or control and the left mouse button. Move the mouse downward with the button held down and you will zoom out. Keep zooming until you see a ring-shaped icon on the mini-map. This icon represents the actual position of your altar. Major structures such as altars are depicted as icons that differ depending on what type of structure is being represented. That is all for now on the subject of mini-maps. Return to the road and keep following it. I will await you further along.
you will learn the very basics of casting spells. In the lower left corner of your screen are three tabs representing your spell books. Below these tabs is a row of icons representing the spells contained within the currently open spell tab. Currently, the only active tab is your general spell tab. This is the middle tab. Make sure this book is open by left-clicking on it. You should see three spell icons on the bottom row. Hold your cursor over an icon to gain information about that particular spell. Select the spell Heal from the spell list by left-clicking on its icon. Your cursor should now change into a targeting cursor. Place the cursor over yourself and left-click to cast the spell. The heal spell is very important to use properly in battle, so you may want to practice it a few more. Enemy sighted. Your spell casting seems to have attracted a locust. Hmm. I wonder what he's doing here. Well, he is the perfect target practice for your spell casting. Select the spell Wrath from your spell list and target the locust. Garbe, Nikto, Rock. Ah, that shows him. Notice that ghostly figure rising from the dead locust? That's its soul. Don't worry about souls just yet. We will discuss them later in your training. Continue along the path and experiment with your other spells. I will meet you in the village up ahead. The speed up spell is very useful when traveling great distances. These fellows here are peasants. Persephone will say they are the heart and soul of Elysium, but they are just a bunch of frightened fellows who can't fight if you ask me. Uh, you see the way they fawn over you? If they like you, they may even follow you around, hoping you'll protect them, I guess. If you seem like a threat, they'll probably go running. <laughs> can't blame them. Aside from the occasional friendly wizard, that's the only defense they have. You will meet a wide variety of creatures in your travels. Not all of them as harmless as these peasants. Keep your eyes open. Sometimes a creature will want to talk to you. If I think they have something important to say, I'll point them out. In any case, your cursor will change to look like a mouth when you point at a creature who has something to say. Now, when you see this, simply walk near them and they'll begin to speak. That's all for your first lesson. Feel free to explore this island all you like, but when you're ready, find a nearby portal and it'll take you to a new island. Then, I'll teach you all about combat. Except I'm no good with magic. There are other gods to worship, but Persephone's the best. Just look at how beautiful it is here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome to the second portion of your training. This time we'll talk about combat. Remember that although you are a master of magic, you aren't the toughest in a fight. If you wade into the middle of combat, you're likely to end up on the wrong side of a troll's fist. To keep watch over a battle and support your troops with magic, it is always best to stand back from the main conflict. A good commander knows when the time is right to join the fray and will only do so when his presence will win the day. Why don't you follow me? Persephone has provided some of her creatures for your training. Here we have the creatures Persephone sent us. I am yours to command by order of the goddess. Yes, well, he seems very eager. Why don't you left-click on him to select him? I stand. Very ready. good. Now, take a look at the druid. You see the triangle and two bars floating above his head? That triangle represents your unit color, and the two bars represent his health and mana. Notice that two icons have appeared in the area on the left side of your screen. The icon in the larger area represents this druid that you have selected. The icon just to the right is for any special abilities that your selected creatures have. In this case, the druid is able to create a magical shield around himself. Go ahead and left click on the life shield icon to command the druid to use his ability. Now he is much more resistant to harm. Notice that when he activated his ability, it used some of his mana. We will learn about regaining mana in a later lesson. Now, for our next lesson, we need another volunteer. The ranger there will do nicely. To select multiple creatures, hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse. Good. Now, wait here. Now that you have both of them selected, send them over to me. Just right-click on the ground near me. Move! On my way. Very good! When you right-click to issue an order, the creature will do a default action. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean he'll try to do the sensible thing based on what you clicked on. Notice that when you right-clicked on the ground, you told them to move? Now make sure they are still selected and right-click on me. Guard! Great! Oh now they will guard me. Notice that they take a position next to me. If I were an enemy, they would have attacked when you right-clicked on me. <laughs> Glad I'm on your side. Why don't you come over here and we'll continue the lesson. There is one more way to issue commands. Sometimes you may want creatures to perform a command other than the default right-click command. For example, you may want to attack an area by issuing an attack order on a piece of ground. Or you may wish to attack a friendly unit by issuing an attack order. We will need another volunteer for this. Ah, Shrike! Why don't you come over here? I don't know if I agree. Hmm. Well, he can stay there then. Select the ranger by left-clicking on him. If you have both the druid... Ready. Now that you have the ranger selected, press and hold down the right mouse button. This will bring up four icons arranged in a cross shape. Don't let go yet. Move the cursor to the right. Notice that more icons appear as you move the cursor. Stop when you reach the icon marked Attack, and then release the mouse button. Now your cursor should take the form of the Attack icon. To execute this order, left-click on the intended target. Try it out on the Shrike over there. What hell? Attack. The Ranger will now attack the Shrike. When you want him to stop attacking, simply give him another order by right-clicking or once again using the cross menu. Meet me down the road for our next lesson. Make sure to order any of your troops who are not guarding me to come On with you. Trail. I stand ready. Guard me. Moving out. Do you forget me? Bye. Guard me. I. Dust breaks out tomorrow. Do you see that rock over there? The one in the middle of that sandy area? Let's suppose you wanted to order your minions to run around that rock in a circle. You would give them that order by issuing a series of orders as waypoints. 
When a series of orders are issued as waypoints, they will execute in the order that they are given, one after the other. To issue orders as waypoints, simply hold down the shift key and then click to issue the order. Both right-click orders and orders issued via the cross menu can be given as waypoints. Try giving your creatures some waypointed orders. When you are comfortable doing this, meet me further up the road. Move! With the move! With move! Line formation! Move. With the song! Move! Aha! Guard me! I. Feeling good about issuing waypoints, eh? Well, we needed some more troops for this next bit. Persephone said she'd send some, but looks like Miss High and Mighty can't be bothered. Did we hear someone calling our name? Persephone, uh, um, <laughs> so um, generous of you to grace us with your divine presence. We were just discussing your many fine qualities. Very good. We have brought you a contingent of our faithful. For we see that you have been prudent thus far, and have preserved the well-being of the other creatures in your charge. Do not allow your vigilance to falter. Oh, good, she's gone. Now, let's start our next lesson. These troops aren't going to be much good bunched up like that. Here, let me show you a trick for separating out groups of tightly packed units. Now that you have control of them, double-click on any one of the creatures with the left mouse button. I stand ready. I stand ready. Notice that it selected the unit you clicked on and all similar units in the immediate area. Go ahead and give them a move order by right-clicking on the ground to the left of the group. Move! By the goddess. Yes. Move! Persephone willing. Now, double-click on the by remaining the creatures goddess. and tell move them ready. to move to the right. Move! On my way. The two groups you ordered are now more organized. Move. It is critical to maintain organization in the heat of battle. To help you organize your troops, you can assign group numbers to them. Go. Now that you have your rangers selected, hold down the control key and hit the one key on your keyboard. You should hear yourself one. declaring that the rangers are now group one. Now, double click on one of the druids to select all yes, of them. My lord. Once yes, this is done, lord. hold down control and hit the two key. Your this will set two. the druid. Hit the one key. This group should one. select Ranger all of the rangers. You will hear your... Go ahead and play around with the group settings. When you feel ready to move on, take the rightmost fork in the road and I will meet you <laughs> further along. And la, do la, la, remember la, la, to bring your troops, will you? Your group three. Yes, my lord. Your group one. Strength. Your group two. Group one. Guard, guard, guard me. Guard me. Group three. Guard uh -huh. me. Now it is time to learn about formations. You may have noticed that your troops will form into a straight line when they reach a destination. This is because they are told to use the line formation by default. Select your group of rangers and have them guard me. Group two. Strength and honor. Guard. You see how on they the form trail. up on either side of me in a line? If an enemy were in front of us, I would be safely out of their line of fire. As I move, they will move with me and try to maintain their position relative to me and to one another. To change the formation that your selected creatures will use, you must access the cross menu. Hold down the right mouse button. When the cross menu appears, move your mouse cursor to the left until it highlights the line formation icon. Now move the cursor up until it highlights the skirmish formation. Release the button. Skirmish formation. You should hear yourself shout out the new formation you want your creatures to form into. Now, right-click on God. me, and they will... Out. When you give a formation order, your troops will not use that formation until they are given their next order. They will then use that formation until they are... Notice that the skirmish formation that you selected orders the troops to shield me by standing in front of me. 
I can't shoot through them, but an enemy trying to get to me has to fight through my screen of ranges first. You will find many different uses for the various formations. Hold down the right mouse button to access the cross menu again and move the cursor upwards this time. Select the circle formation and right click on yourself. Circle formation. Guard me. Follow me and we will continue your lessons. There are several creatures approaching. My lord. Stop! Stop! Oh, well, fire! <laughs> fire! Fire! <laughs> He's got friends! Pyro is attacking the village. We need aid. We must get to that village. Persephone will reward us well if we help her creatures. You're not helping anyone! Oh, they've destroyed the bridge. We must find another way around to the village. Ranger here. Ranger here. Ready. Permission to speak, my lord? Yes, yes, speak up! My lord, I will come with you. I must save my home. Very well, you may come. We need now that you have them selected, hold down shift and click on the new ranger there. He will be ranger now here. onward to the village. I will follow you. Your group too. Guard Already me. done. Before you proceed, many dangers lie ahead. We shall provide additional creatures that you may deter the heretical menace of Pyro. These shrikes will help with any melee creatures we encounter. But watch out for missile fire. They are vulnerable to it. One more thing before we charge into battle. You can use the mini-map to issue orders and select troops. Go ahead and experiment with this. Group three. Ahem. Your group three. Phalanx formation. Please right. guard Sallying me. forth. Dominate, Hmm, I've got a bad feeling about this. Looks like a good place for an ambush. Why don't you go ahead? I'll catch up to you. Group one. Enemy sighted. Group three. Direct me. Culpa, Ilio, Master 
Doc. Group one. I stand well. Enemy sighted. Yes, Nikto, Master Doc, he's right. Your creatures are under attack. Group one. My lord. There's the village. Hurry before it's too late. Enemy sighted. Ferox, Master. Modern, Master Duck, Plateau. Your wizard is under attack. Rock, Nothrak. Your creatures are under attack. Group 3. Your creatures are dying. Invalid target. Your wizard is under attack. Your creatures are dying. You will pay for crossing, Pyro. The tide of progress will not be stopped. Worry not, my friend. We will protect you from the wrath of Pyro. You have Group served three. us well. I... Welcome to our service. This is your final training session. This time we will focus on all aspects of magic and advanced spell casting techniques. This magnificent structure, as you may have deduced by now, is your altar. Your altar is your most important structure since it provides a link to your patron god. In your case, Persephone. Through this link, Persephone can preserve your spirit. That means you'll never die. If your body is destroyed, you will enter an ethereal state. While in this state, you can still command your creatures, but you can't cast spells or gather souls. Would you like to experience the sensation? No sooner said than done. <laughs> I love doing that. Now don't be upset. The link to your altar is keeping your soul from leaving this plane of existence. To come back to life, all you need is the proper amount of magical energy. Magical energy, which we also call mana, can be gained from a variety of sources. Approach your mana is indicated by the blue bar in the upper right corner of the screen. Notice that your mana is slowly recharging. As your mana recharges, so too does your health. Your health is indicated by the red bar next to your mana bar. When your current mana level reaches a quarter of your maximum and your health reaches full, you will reincarnate. Overall, your altar is a pretty weak source of mana. If you really want to charge up your mana, you must seek out mana fountains. Still, if you are unable to find other sources of mana, your altar will have to do. The altar sounds like a pretty good deal, eh? Well, all that it provides is not without cost. If an enemy can taint your altar by desecrating it, <laughs> you're in big trouble. If an enemy is desecrating your altar, you'll see some creatures called sect doctors performing a ritual. Here's one now. As the ritual progresses, you will be struck with magical energy. You will lose health, mana, and experience whenever you are struck by this energy. Luckily enough, sack doctors are not very tough, and you can interrupt the desecration by attacking them. The energies unleashed by the desecration will keep melee attackers at bay. So you will have to disrupt the ritual with ranged attackers or spells. 
Since you only need to do away with one of them to stop the desecration, a single shot of wrath will do the trick. So remember that although your altar is very powerful, it is also very vulnerable. We'll talk about how you can desecrate an enemy altar in a bit. First, you must learn about mana. Follow me. Persephone, guide me. Wisdom and justice. By the goddess, I implore you, you will not trespass here. The enemies of Elysium must be taught a lesson. I never did trust you. This is a mana fountain. Supposedly, back in the elder days when the earth was torn asunder and the floating islands first formed, there was a terrible release of magical energies and blah 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 blah. Ancient history. What matters now is that there are magical geysers like this one all over the place. Whenever you stand near a mana fountain, your own natural mana reserves will replenish. A mana fountain is the best source of mana around and will recharge you much faster than your altar. Anyone standing near a mana fountain, friend or foe, will regain lost mana. To keep the mana to yourself and your creatures, you'll need to summon a magical structure called a mana lith. That's right, you put the mana lith on the mana fountain. To summon a mana lith, open your third spell tab and left click on the mana lith spell. Your cursor will now change into a targeting cursor. Highlight the stump of the mana fountain and left click to summon a mana lith. You are low on mana. Now that you have a mana lith on this mana fountain, only you and your creatures may utilize it. Follow me and we will continue your lessons. Beware, good mystic, for we do sense the taint of evil on this island. It may be that one of Charnel's necromancers, the vile Syrix, has come to carry out some mischief. She is formidable, but fear not. Fight with wisdom and justice, and you shall prevail. We shall grant you a few spells in case you encounter any difficulty. Sighted. Denorum Saxo. Your wizard is under attack. Elorum Must be a scout for Cyrix. Good job finishing it off. If Cyrix is here, I will need to teach you a few more things. Here we go, a few lost souls for you to gather. You need souls to summon creatures. Most creatures require a single soul, but the more powerful ones use more. These souls are blue, which means they are pure and ready for your use. Blue souls may be collected simply by touching them. Now that you have a few souls, we need to summon some creatures. The first type of creature we will need is a mana whore. Open the spell tab on the left and cast the Summon Mana Horse spell by left clicking on it. Good. This little guy is called a Mana Horse, as you may have guessed. He is not much of a fighter, but he is probably your most important creature. He channels mana from your mana liths to an area around him. Although a single Mana Horse is a much weaker source of mana than a Mana Lith, you can summon several to make up for their lack of power. Don't get carried away though. A soul used for a mana whore could be used for a fighting creature instead. Try summoning another mana whore and a few other creatures to defend yourself with. 
Notice that when you summon a creature, it is automatically added to your selection. Flam, Thorn, Varnathrax. Wodan, Bethard, Gaza. You are low on mana. Thorn. You are low on mana. Enemy sighted. Someone is Your attacking building your is under attack. You could run back there and deal with it, but the teleport spell is a better way to go. The teleport spell can teleport you and your surrounding creatures to a building you that you control. On mana. Open up the spell tab that contains your structures. Select the teleport spell from the list by clicking on it. Now your cursor is a targeting icon. Place the icon over the manolith or its icon on the minimap and left click. This will teleport you there. Another victory! <laughs> Soon we will have no more enemies left, eh, wizard? Notice that the soul of the dead locust is red. That means that it is impure and must be cleansed by a ritual before we can use it. Walk over towards the dead locust, then open your spell tab that has to do with structures. Left click on the icon marked Convert in the spell list. Target the locust soul and left click. Kalpa, Mastodoc, Thorn, Bovis, Elio, Gaza, Bovis. This will summon one of those sack doctors we saw earlier. He is a spirit servant of the gods who will cleanse the soul, resurrect the creature, and take it to your altar to be offered to your god. Once the ceremony at your altar is complete and your god accepts the soul, it will be transferred directly to you. Remember what I said earlier about sack doctors? They are notoriously shy when it comes to fighting. If they take enough damage, they will drop whatever they are doing and flee the battle. Now, when you feel up to the task, let's go find Sir. Nikto, 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 Rock, Saxo, Klaatu. Phalanx formation. Guide me. Yes. Nathrak, Rock. Doth you are low on mana. Bovis. Guard me. We're Enemy sighted. Your group won. Invalid target. Nathrak, You are low on mana. All is going well, but do not think Cyrix will fall easily. She is a wizard, much the same as you. That means she won't stay dead. Instead of just killing her, we need to banish her by finding and desecrating her altar. You are low on mana. Correct me. Need more souls. Guard me. Group one. <laughs> you are low on mana. You are low on mana. You are low on mana. Nathrak, Pirata, Saxo, Elorum, Domine, Pejorative, Nostro, Pejorative, Saxo, Nostro, Vas. Group Slam. one. Direct me. Carpe, Domine, Crixa. You are low on mana. Nathrak, Wodan, Crixa, Saxo. Now that we have a manolith in a forward area that we control, we need to make sure that we keep it under our control. To provide us with some extra defense, we can use the Guardian spell. Move a creature near the manolith and stand near the creature. Now open up your structure spell book. Left click on the Guardian spell and target the creature. Direct me. Move. With a song in my heart.
You see that red energy beam? That links the creature to the structure. He will absorb any damage that the structure takes. In turn, he will feed off of the energy of the structure and will gain increased statistics. Of course, he is now linked to the structure and cannot move very far away from it. Your group this is a very powerful spell, and when used properly, it can turn the tide of battle. Guard me! Sallying forth! Sighted. are under attack. You are low on mana. Enemy sighted. Your wizard is under attack. Your creatures are under attack. Syrix's altar. To put her out of the game, approach the altar and cast the Desecrate spell on one of your nearby creatures. This will sacrifice the targeted creature on your the enemy creatures altar. Are under attack. Ferox, Vatu, Ross, Mastodon, Nikto, Kalpa, Saxo, Sankt, Thorn, Dothto, Diem, Denorum, Denorum. Enemy sighted. That As the ritual progresses, it will damage Syrix. If she dies while the ritual is in effect, her altar will be destroyed and she will be banished from this place. Justice has triumphed. Charnel will be incensed that Syrix was defeated by one so young. You show great promise. Soon you shall join the ranks of our most honored mystics. 